Welcome back. It's Dawn with Nature of Relationships, and I'm here today with Coach Les from Less is More Coaching. He's an integrity coach, and we're here to, take, to talk about love and forgiveness and healing and navigating through divorce and relationships. So Les has a really, Coach Les has a really great story, and so I brought him here to share that with us today. So if you want to just take <laughs> it away, I mean, I could ask you a question. No, that's I think fine. you should start your story. <laughs> Well, I think the best thing, and I've told this story enough now um, on a social media app where it's like a podcast, right? And mm -hmm. people ask me, so, you know, like, what's, tell us about your, you know, you have Kristen, who's your miracle wife. And then when you get to speaking to you, it's your second miracle wife. So my first miracle wife I met and I had promised myself that I would not be my dad. Right. And my dad got divorced twice and had lots of erroneous extracurricular activities. And of course, the minute you say that, you're creating the path for you to follow. Right. And, and you say, I'm not going to be something you often draw, right? Because then your yeah. energy goes towards that's actually what I am. And your brain doesn't hear not. So you get drawn towards exactly the thing. Yeah. And I didn't realize that until probably divorce number two. So the nuclear bomb is that, that I drop into the middle of a conversation is I've been married. I'm on my fourth marriage and I consider myself an integrity coach. A communication is my specialty and relationships in business, faith, and family are my thing. Mm -hmm. And when it all, all this happened, I'll never forget what a coach said to me, and then I'll jump into the story. She said, Les, I have some good news and some bad news. And I'm like, okay, well, give me the bad news first. Is people are gonna come to you for relationship advice? And I went, you gotta be kidding me. And she said, the good news is that because you've gone through this plethora that nobody can believe and that you've restored integrity with each of the relationships and where you're at, which I'll get to in a minute, they're going to have this whole level of trust and belief in your journey. Now, of course, there's always going to be the extremists, the fundamentalists that go, well, I can't listen to you. I've been married for 40 years. So you're what you, whatever you're going to say is worthless. Mm -hmm. And that I think always, no matter where you're at in the spectrum, you're going to have that person. Mm -hmm. We go to my first marriage and she was a miracle in my world, the miracle because I had a perfect partner wish list. Uh, a lot of people have wish lists. <laughs> and Very I, and I, I didn't actually call it my wish list, but I, I called it my perfect partner list. Okay. And it had 86 things on it. God. <laughs> thought I was that with five. <laughs> I like narrowed it down to five things. Good. <laughs> no, it's, and some of those things are going to make you laugh. And there's a reason that they're on there. Like one of them is to SSD. Mm -hmm. in 30 minutes or less and it's poop shave shower and dress with the other word right ssd <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we'll try and keep this parental um uh, pg here and for me what that meant was all the stuff around it that it that it spoke to was that it was somebody that wasn't so worried about their looks that they could put it throw on a baseball cap boom and head out Right. Or if they literally went from gardening and completely disheveled, they could be in 30 minutes or less, be ready to rock and roll for an evening's entertainment. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for me, as I dated, this became a very, very common thing, theme thing in the people that I dated. The ones that were super high maintenance were definitely not for me because mm -hmm. they didn't like the outdoors for one, right? right? You right. want me to go sleep in a tent, get rained on, and then go <laughs> climb in the dirt the next right. day? And I'm like, uh-huh. And then jump in the lake to wash off with, you know, lake sh shower soap? I, I can't do that. I got to have my $50 bottle of high maintenance shampoo, right? Right. And so that's a lot of what my list entailed. And Marsha hit that. Mm-hmm. 
everything on it. Um, I think there was one thing we came to a compromise on and it was awesome. It was like, wow. And we did everything by the book, dated for a year, engaged for a year, and then got married. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and within six months to a year, now this, I was a little later on. It was when I was in my late twenties and about three to six months into the marriage, things started to change. And I immediately got hijacked had that amygdala hijack going, wait a minute, now that I've married you, you're going to change and the real you is going to show up. Mm -hmm. And I had heard this, right? You hear this from the men, the gossip men that tell you, this is what happens. All women are this way. Right. Right. And just like all men are this way. <laughs> exactly. Right? Like we're all always blaming each other. They're like that. Oh my gosh. We can't. <laughs> and yeah. the mold is a hole in the middle of the bottom of a funnel. Right. And everybody gets thrown into the funnel, you know, mm -hmm. and there's a female funnel and there's a male funnel, period. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened was we started partying. Like we met dancing. We worked out together. We did karate together. We went, I was in the wine business and she came and did wine dinners with me. I mean, you talk about, you know, former Miss, Miss Minnesota runner up, you know, she, I put her in a beautiful dress and nobody pays attention to me. It's beautiful, right? right? I just give them information and they look at her and go, ooh, yeah, right? And I sell <laughs> lots of wine. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> Good career choice. <laughs> it was beautiful. And she stopped going to those events. Hmm. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is the holidays. 60% of my business was done October, November, December. Mm -hmm. And she was bailing out of them. And, I, and that was... I, and I'm just, you know, I, I'm it's I'm so busy at work, I don't notice. I mean, I, I don't realize, like, there's nothing I can do. And I'm not communicative anymore. I'm in my little, I'm diving into my bomb shelter, mm -hmm. going, see, I got screwed like everybody else. And I had been engaged once before. And see, you know, same thing. You know, that time I didn't get married. I was lucky, right? I got out. Mm -hmm. She made the changes be between Ooh, the engagement and the marriage. Yeah. Right? So now here I am married. And I'm like, and it was terrible. I mean, it just went downhill. Then I started to do things that were inappropriate, you know, or borderline. Not quite over the line, mm -hmm. but enough to be, forget it, right? Mm -hmm. And I just said, I can't do this. I don't want to be my dad again. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I, I've got to... I got to get out. So it, that happened over about the course of three years. And we went to a, a psychiatrist and they said, look, you know, I've, I've got this black and white laminated with her list on the other side. And I bring that in and I set that down on the table. Uh -huh. And he goes, wow. And I could see her and she put her arms, folded her arms, crossed her legs. And I, and so I'm like, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm over here and where the camera is where, was where the doctor was. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, it looks like you're pretty set. And I said, well, if you're going to change everything on this sheet and all these things, I, I, I'm not married to the same person. And as she just had her arms folded, she goes, you mean I can't change? And I said, 80%? No, mm -hmm. that's not fair because now you're not the same person. Like, yeah, 20%, sure, after three years, but I was hoping to be stay married to you for 60. And we're less than three years in, and 80%, I'm going to lose everything. So we ended up getting divorced, and it was pretty am amicable, amicable, and, you know, we parted sort of on speaking terms, um, d just a lot of heartbreak. And phew, two years later, I went through a personal training and development program, mm -hmm. and I, I got like I got myself and I saw that I stopped being the person responsible for dating my wife. Right. Like while you were married, you mm -hmm. stopped actually dating her. You just, we what? just carried every day, you know, like it's, we get wake up, hi, good, bye, see you off and doing the things. And when Routine, she didn't pattern, pattern rut, you bet. And if she stuff. didn't want to do the things that we did getting to know each other, then I was doing, I said, look, I'm still going to go dancing five nights a week. Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm dancing five nights a week without my wife. 
And she would go to bed at nine o'clock because she would get up early the next morning, which was fine, but she used to go to bed at 11 o'clock when we were dancing together. Mm -hmm. So these things happened and it just pushed us further and further apart. And rather than, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and I come back after two years and going through this personal training and development program and I saw how I had stopped dating her and I'd stopped being inquisitive as to why she was doing what she was doing like, why are you not wanting to? And when we, I, I actually called her up and I got together with her and I said, I'm sorry. I take 100% responsibility for our divorce. And she's like, what? I said, yeah, I can see this, 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 this. And she goes, whoa. Like she saw the breakthrough, heard it, saw it. And she goes, now Les, I, I take the responsibility as well. And the course that you've gone through, I can completely see the difference it made. And I still love you. I always will. I just did not know how to communicate through that war zone because you were so triggered by what, how it occurred for you. Like it occurred for me, she had got me and now she's gonna go back to herself. Mm. As opposed to, she said, I just wanted now that I was married, I wanted to stay home and have a home life with you, not go out every night, maybe go out three nights or two nights a week and build a home. And of course, you know, when she said it, I'm like, well, yeah, I would have loved that too. Hmm. But we became, she was strong and I was strong. And as soon as we started punching that protective bubble, you know, that's where it went. Yes. So now fast forward, um, I met a, uh, a lady named Yvonne and my stepmom loved her. Everybody loved her. The people around me loved her. Isn't that great? When everybody <sighs> loves the person you're dating <laughs> almost <laughs> more than you do. <laughs> what? I don't know if that was true for you. Not in the beginning. I've been in that space. Yeah. 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 And, and everybody said, oh, she'll be so good for you. Oh, good for you. Yes, she's gonna. She's got qualities that you don't have, and the two of you together will be perfect. She's super organized. She's a producer, productive, boom, 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 right? And yeah. gardener. I mean, she was very like meticulous. Like she cleans things and file folders. I mean, she's an organizer. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I can get on board with this. Yeah, and I love this, right? So, you know, we, you know, we dated the. You know, there was some stuff that was kind of, eh, I'm like, well, I guess I could live with it because in 30 years, it's not going to be much different than this anyway. Okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take the coaching. I, I'll listen to the people around me that clearly see better than I did. Right. They all know what I should have in a relationship. Uh, yep. And the diff, the thing that was missing was what happened behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. We had an amazing relationship. People were like, oh my gosh, Les, you two are the epitome of an amazing relationship. Because when we'd be together out in the public and doing an event together, mm -hmm. the, everybody's like, wow, the two of you are just so synergetic together. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and it got to the point after about three, three years, I'm like, people don't have a clue what's going on behind closed doors. And I loved her for all of this. So we spent two years being separated and getting divorced. Like, and she's today still one of my best friends. And she has vetted my current wife. And while we were together, my first wife called me up and said, Les, I need your coaching. My husband and I are in the place that you and I were in, except I'm in your place. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, I could give you the whole long story, but to make it short, on a Saturday night, I gave her an assignment. Her husband agreed to do the assignment. He did not, he never liked me because he knew his wife still loved me, mm -hmm. right? So there was, he just didn't like me. Right. And the coaching I gave to them, they did that night. They did the homework. And the next morning she called me crying and I'm like, uh-oh. And she goes, these are tears of joy. I don't know how to thank you. Steve now thinks you're a great guy. Nice. And he understands why I still love you. And he's super thankful. So that happened. Yeah. And um, 
you know, then here I am falling apart in my second marriage. And I'm like, okay, I should just, you know, we, I should just be single. And then a bunch of people knew that I was single and they said, oh, Les, you should go out. Why aren't you and Lindy together? I'm like, Lindy, yeah. You guys have known each other and danced together for 25 years. You've watched either in and out of relationships. The, both of you were like super high energy, super high romance, super, all these things, these super things. So we got together and it was like supercharged. <laughs> <laughs> and, within, and within like three to four weeks, we were like, this is it. She got me a parking space in her apartment nice. so I could have my own underground heated parking space. You know, she would pull into my driveway, into my garage, right? And I'd pull into heated. So, and it was a surprise. And I'm like, this woman is, ex we were everything. And it was passion, passion, passion. I mean, every day, morning, night, noon, middle of the day. It was phenomenal. And so we said, let's do it. Let's get married mm -hmm. spiritually and then have a formal wedding a year from now. Ah, okay. We won't tell anybody. We'll just call it our engagement. Okay. But we both wanted to be married so we could, you know, have, have fun. Right. Um, in the eyes of God. And uh, six days later, <laughs> it was her day night to come over and be at our house because we hadn't joined. that We were going to wait a year because she still had a lease and everything. And it was her night to be over and I'd come and she's still dressed because normally we just go to bed. And she gets done with work. And I'm like, what's going on? And she says, Les, all your stuff is in the garage. And I put the ring back in the box in the dresser. I can't do this. And I went, what? What do you mean you can't do this? I'm on a huge high. I had just gotten over off of some phone calls that I completed some stuff that was part of this completion project from five years before. And I was like on cloud nine. And this news just went <laughs> Now, luckily, I wasn't at the level and I would have sunk to the hole. Mm -hmm. I was on cloud nine and I just landed on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty civil and I said, "What's well, you got to tell me. And she goes, I don't want to give you any more baggage. So I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> and I'm like, Lindy, <laughs> you don't understand. If you don't tell me, that's going to give me more baggage. Because I'm Your mind <laughs> makes up all these stories, right? Oh, man, our mind's so much worse on us than the actual story, isn't it? Of course. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm like, you can't, you, you got to give me some. And she says, I can't keep up with you. I said, we've only been together for six days. I mean, you know, for, and several months. And she goes, Les, I just, I can see it. You're high energy. You're on and off. And I said, well, so are you. And she goes, I, I know, but it's not going to work. I need somebody to come home to that's level. Mm. I said, you tried that with the last guy you lived with. She goes, I know he was too dead though. Right. And, uh, you know, so I had a conversation. We had a, a little bit of a conversation about it. And I kind of fought for my position. And I said, you know what? You're going to do whatever you're going to do. So um, we parted. We've stayed friends. We're still good friends. Um, and then I, I hired a dating coach. So How'd that go? Phenomenal. Because he told me to keep my you-know-what in my pants. Okay. Don't touch. Don't kiss. Don't do any of that stuff. Very unusual in this day and age. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And he said, Les, you already know all that stuff. You know what you that you want it. We're good. Now we figured it out. And you want to be Christian. You just got baptized. Keep keep it in your pants. Don't touch. Don't kiss. And get to know the person. Mm -hmm. And so I went back to this dating organization, high profile dating organization I've been with and dated a few people and you know I'd just go out for coffee right mm -hmm. so I think there were four ladies that I was kind of mixing in and out and one of them was Chinese mm -hmm. and my dating coach said Les make sure you don't kiss this one for sure I know that that's the rule but especially this person because the culture the minute you do that it's like sealing the deal mm -hmm. when you get to that point and so we had been on dates and she said, um, on I like the 10th date, she's, we're sitting on the couch and she kind of 
puts her head in my lap, right? And leans back and looks up at me and says, is there something wrong with me? Mm. And I, you know, and I'm sitting there like, I, you know, like killing myself because drop dead gorgeous, everything smart, beautiful, ever. But I knew there was something that wasn't missed, that was missing. Mm -hmm. And after a moment, she, you know, I said, no, I said, I, I said, look, sit down and I'll, I'll tell you. And I told her, I said, look, this is the this is the rule I'm, and you know that I'm dating other people. And she goes, I know, I'm, I I, I want you though, mm -hmm. and I said I understand, but there's something that's not right between us. And what it was was she wanted to get married immediately as soon as possible and have kids bang 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 right away. Mm -hmm. And come to find out, 18 months later. She was having her second. She was having her second kid already. Wow. She met another guy right after. She had been dating a couple times with, chose him, got married. And within eighteen, I think it was like eighteen months. It was less than two years. Okay. And she had two kids, so she got what she wanted, yeah. right? And I know that would not have been a good match. Mm -hmm. So at church, I met Kristen, and I did exactly what the card said. You know what my dating coach said. And we hung out and we went to movies. I didn't even, we didn't even really start dating until I said, look, I, I put these women on a list. My coach said, put them on a list. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then cross them off if they're, you know, given what they're, see which one stays there. And for, and but basically for shits and giggles, I put Kristen on the bottom as number five. Mm -hmm. And I crossed everyone off except her, but I wasn't dating her. Mm, that's interesting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause, we just we were friends and we hung out in the lobby at church because she was uh, in the post post office business and had to answer her phone occasionally. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I finally called her up and I and I had asked her to go out on a date months earlier and she's like I'm not dating. Right? She just had a bad. And um, finally after this I said, look, I've crossed all these people off, and she knew that what I was doing, right? So when yeah. I told her that my dating coach had me do this list. I said, and you're on my list. And I showed it to her. It's on a little post-it. I still have the post-it. And uh, I said, will you date? go out on a date now? And she goes, okay. And we went on a date a week. Um, and and I told her the same rule. right? And, it, and on the 11th date, she spent the night fully clothed mm -hmm. with two body pillows and two dogs between us mm -hmm. on a king bed. And I looked at her and I said, you know that you're, you're going to have to kiss me, right? Because of our agreement. And she said, oh, yeah. And then she went to sleep. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> that was a hint. Did you get my hint? <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed and fell asleep. And um, it was funny because then the next, um, the next week we got together and this was the 12th day. And sure enough, this time she reached the same situation and she sp and spent the night and she reached over the pillows this time to, to look at me and say, good night. And then she reached down and gave me a kiss. And from that kiss, I knew. Like there was just, I just, I knew it. Mm -hmm. I knew she was the one. I knew I would have zero issues with any of the things. I mean, cause we'd laughed about my list. We talked about it just in an offhanded way. Right. right? And I knew there was nothing and uh, so I got to know her and I, got, I had met a couple of her kids and how she treated her kids. Um, then I met the father of the kids and to make, a long, to make that long story short, um, we got married um, and we actually got married twice. We got married rather, not quickly, but quicker than most people would say. Um, and by a Nigerian pastor who was also a judge in his office um, and we went to go through his training. And at the same time, we were going through a church's um, pre-engagement training as well. And after we got married, she looked at me and said, would you mind if we, get, we had another marriage, another ceremony in the church? So my stepdad can walk me down the aisle. Now, what I didn't tell you is that she was never ever gonna get married. She was with Jeff, the father of her kids for 18 years and they were never married. Oh wow. And she never wanted to get married. Mm -hmm. And for some reason she did to me, like something shifted. And then she wanted to get married again and have her stepdad walk her down the aisle. 
So Jeff was my best man, and my stepson was standing right next to him on the stage um, as a groomsman. And, you know, all the way through COVID, Jeff was at our house every Sunday for dinner, for family dinner. And I consider him one of my good friends. Yeah. And I think, and I had all the kids say yes. Like that they wanted you as, as a stepdad. As a stepdad. Yeah, like they all approved of me marrying their mom. Mm -hmm. They'd all spoken to her. Even the daughter that was had um, pushed her out of her life mm -hmm. and was just starting to let her back in at the holidays. Not really, but and we. I met her. I I can I didn't force, but I asked Kristen to take me to where she worked. And I came in and she'd already heard about me, right? Because the family's pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, the kids are for sure. And I said, I'm, I'm here to, act. and she knew at some point I might come. Mm -hmm. And she said, of course, Les, you don't need my permission. But given what I've heard so far, you're exactly what my mom deserves. And so with the approval of all the kids, and then I asked Jeff, the father of the kids, if he approved of us getting married. Mm -hmm. And he said yes, and people can't believe that, right? And it's but it's a whole different energy than just your friends being like, "Oh, you should marry her because she's so great," right? Like that's a whole. Or different... my stepmom saying she's perfect for you. Right, right, right. You know, and I and and to to kind of put the cherry on the top of this cake is I still have a dating coach. Mm -hmm. I still communicate with him. I'm still being held responsible for dating, and we're coming up on four years. And there have been some tumultuous things that, that have happened in the four years. Dating your wife. D dating my wife, right? Mm -hmm. We've had issues, some mm -hmm. big ones. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had breakthroughs. Like, we now play disc golf yeah. because I was spending so much time on this new social media app. And I literally have, you know, if, if the camera was my wife, I'd have my little iPod in over here listening as we're doing going for a walk. And I'd be, uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, honey, yep, listening to the, you social know, the, the social media stuff. And we, she finally drew a line in the sand and said, you know, if this is the way our marriage is going to be, that's one thing, right? Um, and it's going to, everything's going to change. Like, mm -hmm. she's not going to get divorced. She's just like, things are going to change. Mm-hmm. And they're not gonna, it's not gonna be good changes for you, I can tell you that, that's what she said. And I said, well, well wait a minute. And I said, well, what's the matter? And she explained what it was like walking with somebody that was half present. Right. So I made an agreement, and if you look at my calendar now, there's all this blue all over my calendar that's considered family time. Mm -hmm. And I'm not allowed to mess with that. Now, does that mean I can, I, I, I can say, hey, honey, I've got this special event. Can I do this special event? She'll say, oh, sure, mm -hmm. right? Because there's communication around it. Mm -hmm. But there's no headsets in. And what's funny is she now has headsets in once in a while for work. It's hilarious. Oh, that's funny. Because I'll look and say, what's the headset for? And she's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm on call. I'm like, oh, okay, just, just checking. <laughs> well, you do that more in a playful manner, oh, not, not like oh, now we're keeping no, score. No, no, yeah, yeah. no, it's more. In that's a, distracting, right? Distracting yeah, it, it, yeah, it's crazy. She's like, "What are you keeping score now?" I'm like, "No." I mean, I remember, but I'm not keeping. I, right. I just. I'm it, not holding it. Against I'm not holding you, against right? you because I know now. I know what you're doing, right? Yeah. And um, you know, there's a whole level of communication, and I've even gone on walks listening walking next to her and she knows it mm -hmm. right because she knows i'm 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 waiting for something to happen for me to interact and then i'm done right mm -hmm. and then i can and then i can be 100 percent with her but i'm waiting and i've got i'm like on a schedule mm -hmm. and she wants to go for a walk and i said well i'm on this schedule and she goes that's okay no worries yeah. so there's there's that communication that was not there before and I think that's the whole piece, right? And so when I share with my dating coach, how, what, what are the breakdowns, breakthroughs, and stuff that have happened every week, that accountability piece is amazing. That's great. Yeah. And that's my recommendation for everybody, right? Is the first thing like, when people say, oh, I'm having issues with my wife, I said, great. Okay, What's, what are you doing differently than when you first dated her the first five times? Mm -hmm. Well, everything, I said, well, then you've got what you deserve. 
now are you interested in turning it around? Mm-hmm. And I have, I have a, a gentleman in um, South Carolina who is a UPS driver. And, uh, you know, I've been coaching him now for a year. And we talk maybe once a month when he has a huge breakdown because it's it's and it's gotten long further apart the thing that you know she, she didn't like his drinking mm-hmm. he says well i don't i don't do, i'm not harmful she goes no but you're not there mm-hmm. like your drinking takes you somewhere else you're not a mean drunk you're just not you and i want you and his response in the beginning was, well, you used to drink too and you were there with me. And she goes, I know, but I don't anymore. I've grown up. Right? Yeah. You, you're you still the same age you were. And I, I've for the last seven years, I've kept wanting something different. Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to change, then maybe it's time for us. You know, the kids are old enough now. It's the time for us to go different. And I'm like, dude, do you want her? And he goes, yes. I said, is she still attracted to you? Yes. I said, do you still want to sleep with her? Yes. <laughs> right. You know, I said, okay, so what's holding you back? She wants to control me and my drinking. I said, so do you want to drink or be married? And I think the thing for me is to start to be absolute about communication and th- stop letting the emotion be there, but look at the integrity like spokes on a wheel. And also, I mean, look at also how you just framed that, right? Mm-hmm. She's not controlling his drinking. He gets to make a choice. Yes. What would I prefer to do? Here's what she wants. What do I prefer to do? And that's a different conversation than she's trying to control me. It is. You know? It is. But I think we don't see that sometimes. No, because we feel controlled. <laughs> Or trapped, or upset, or angry, or fearful, or whatever we feel, right? And we have no, and we have nobody to either talk to or be responsible with, right? Right. Yeah, because our friends jump on our bandwagon of of like, oh, dude, that's that's sucky. Why would she do that? Exactly. Yeah, Yeah. And so she goes to her friends for that support. He goes to his drinking buddies. Right. The guy, your wife wants to control your drinking and stop you from drinking. I'd get rid of her. Right. Right. (laughs) And there's no curiosity, mm. there's no questioning, there's no like, how do you get back together? You know, and, yeah. and he'll call me and he'll say, I can't believe this happened. I'm like, tell me this, because I, I know, right? Just give me the, get, lay out the story and he'll like, tell me his opinion. And I'll say, no, 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 no. I don't, just, just what happened? Well, this happened. I said, okay, and what did you make it mean? Mm-hmm. What are the facts? What's your perspective on the facts? And then how do you feel about your perspective? Or, yeah. Yeah. And I said, great. Now take your feelings out of it. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you mean? I, I'm, I, this is about love. And re- I said, yeah. The difficulty is your feelings and your emotions are warped at the moment. Mm-hmm. They're being driven by your amygdala rather than your frontal cortex. Yes. <sighs> yeah. And, you know, in other words, your second brain is thinking. And for a man, that's a bad sign. <laughs> I think for everyone, it's a bad sign. But, <laughs> but I will concede your point since you're a man. <laughs> I think it's... I'm, you I'm, bad I'm, mouth yourself. Right. right. Well, I mean, I'm making fun of that thing that everybody always says. Right. Like, which head are you thinking with? Right. Exactly. You know, exactly. I mean, and, I, and, I, and I've heard it, you know, what part of your anatomy are you thinking with to a woman, right? It's just right. they get to play with the word for men. Right. And uh, no, so I think, I, you know, I've learned a lot in, the, in my years since 1989, mm-hmm. you know, and excuse me, 1999 um, with my first marriage and to today. And, you know, I look to be the best husband I can possibly be every day. And I know that I'm, there are times I'm going to fail miserably at it. And it's how do I restore that integrity? Mm-hmm. And be, and I think, as you know, as a a pastor too, I got to practice what I preach. Mm-hmm. And as I'm constantly doing that, I think that makes a space available for people to watch and be the demonstration of what it takes. And it doesn't mean I'm not going to make mistakes. Right. <laughs> I mean, I make them all the time. Yeah. You know, because you come home tired. Mm-hmm. You come home frustrated from a client. 
or bad day at work or somebody said something or somebody did something or something didn't happen that you were hoping would happen and you come home and you come home to this wall of whatever right because they're a human being and they're dealing with whatever they're dealing with mm -hmm. and occasionally you hit triple sevens in the negative way yeah and the question is are you gonna have that jackpot be the end of your marriage or are you gonna have that jackpot say okay we've got a place to build yeah that's great advice <laughs> well thank you you're welcome great story great advice and the practice of conversion, right? <laughs> you got to throw that word in there. Yes. I love the word. Being happy for other people's happiness, right? So yeah. that's another place that I've admired about you and your past relationships, right? It's like Jeff's happy for you and Kristen, right? You're happy for your former wives and the lives that they've found. Like there doesn't have to be hatred and anger and animosity. Like you learn it, you use it to learn and to grow and to build and to find something better for yourself in your current relationships. You know? And for to find help them find something better for themselves too, right? right? And support them in finding that, yeah. whatever that may be. And that's, I think, sometimes hard for people too, yeah. right? Is to be, you know, I mean, one of Zig Ziglar's famous quotes is, help enough people get what they want, and then you'll get what you want. Mm -hmm. But most people want what they want, and then they'll try. Right. And I think it's that it, you have to remember that it's give, 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 and then it'll come back. And most people want to give a little, get a lot. Yeah. So we are. Well, thank you. Thank you, Coach Les. I yeah. appreciate it. Thanks, Don. I appreciate the time and, and the interview. It's always fun to right. share and talk about it. And yeah. So people write in the comments below what did you learn? What's your biggest takeaway from this process? Thank you much. Ciao. Bye.